to my ducks and drinks welcome to the crowd lake and today we'll be watching over our dead bow bo, 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 body body in my knowledge is not spelled with two d's but i'm guessing that's a pun a clue murder mystery thomas sanders he puts his name after the titles i don't understand why maybe you guys do but guess who had no ideas for this saturday so saturday morning or friday morning I don't, what day is it when this was posted i decided to reaction video because frozen's going on and i'm busy so we're, we're just gonna fit a vibe Oh. Mr. Bonnie, age 39, found dead this evening at the Hill House Estate during a strange party with some colorful guests. Oh, body. Miss Scarlet, Colonel Mustard, Mrs. White, Mr. Green, Mrs. Peacock, and Professor Plum. Also present were Mr. Body's butler, Wadsworth, and the maid, Yvette. I'm Detective Jewel. It is my job to ascertain who did this, with what weapon, and where. Body's in the lounge. One down. Why are all the weapons surrounding the body? I placed them there, sir. Why? I like to keep things tidy. <sighs> Great. So, let's begin. All right, Miss Scarlet, let's start with you. Naturally. To the best of your knowledge, describe the events leading up to the murder. Well, there's not much to say. Listen here, we were all gathered in this dreadful house because Mr. Body sent us an invitation. Turns out he was blackmailing us, which is a ghastly thing to do to a person. And Wadsworth, the butler, turns out he had evidence, which is silly because I, I did absolutely nothing wrong. Next thing you know, Mr. Body is handing each of us a weapon and telling us to kill Wadsworth when he turns off the lights. And here I am thinking I'm in a house full of liars and deviants, armed liars and deviants who could just as easily come after me, who knew all their disgusting secrets. Lights go out, they're scrambling, everybody's going every which way in the house the lights come back on and now all we have is mr body's body and he's just a disembodied nobody <laughs> the question was what was your name i didn't do it again what are they calling you here oh uh, uh mr green mm. and aliases are being used due to blackmail i have no shame over it i'm a homosexual but <laughs> either keep quiet about it or risk losing my position at the state department I just noticed you're a very good looking man. I'm taken. Okay, great. Now, where were you in the house? I don't remember. <laughs> yes. So where did you leave it? I put it down somewhere. And where might that have been? I don't know. I know it was somewhere. I'm sorry. I, I seem to have banged my head pretty bad out there. Very convenient. This is so inconvenient. Enough people suspect me having to do with my husband's death, and now here I am implicated in another death? I thought your last husband disappeared. That was my first husband. I'm referring to the second. Listen, why are you so concerned with the six weapons that were given to us? It's a whole mansion of random objects. The kitchen alone must have 30 knives. That may be true, but we're only focused on these six weapons. But why? Because that's how the game is played. Uh, I, I had the candlestick, though. Did you just pick up a piece of evidence? Or oh, should I not have done that? I'm sorry. It's not even a great weapon, though. If someone were to come for me, I would have been a sitting duck. What makes you think they'd come for you? I don't know these people. By the time the lights went out, I was afraid I'd get caught in the line of fire. So I ran to the opposite. Yes, Patton's voice. I love I that. I didn't do it. Specifically, where did you go? Beats me. The room with the plant. I ended up kicking over a pot and breaking it, trying to save my skin. Okay, so the room with Mr. Green. No, not the fruit, the plant. So there would be no reason for me to suspect you? Really, sir, would it make sense? You see, we're only here because, well, we're in the movie. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't talking to you. You're not on the list. Scarlet, plum, mustard, green, white, peacock. Oh, come on. How could it have been me? I was completely unarmed. But you had the rope. Like I said, I was completely unarmed. The rope was tied into a noose. It came that way. What do you think I could have done? Snuck up behind this man, thrown the noose around his neck, and held him down while simultaneously choking him and stifling his ability to scream for help? So is that a confession? No! 
The pipe was bent when I got it! Seems like an easy excuse for explaining away what could be a dent caused by its impact upon a man's skull. But you don't have evidence of that, correct? Yes. Yes, meaning it's correct you don't have evidence, or yes, you have evidence? I meant yes as in no. Yes as in no? Yes or no, did you have the revolver? What difference does it make if I did or didn't? I'd say it means a lot, considering Mr. Body was found with what appeared to be four holes of shrapnel in his chest. Well, that could have been any one shrapnel. So that's it then. Bullet holes mean that it was Mrs. White. Maybe. There also may or may not be evidence of blunt force trauma. Look, I need a straight answer on this. Am I wrong to think that there is or isn't evidence of Mr. Body being hit on the head? Um... Yes. Yes, I'm wrong, or yes, there's evidence! Someone was trying to hit him on the head! You seem to be sure of that. All right. Listen. Yes, I had the revolver. And yes, I fired it, but not at Mr. Body. I was aiming at his attacker. A man. Or at least the shape of a man. And he was wielding a large, heavy instrument? All men would like to believe they wield large, heavy instruments. <clears throat> Do you recall what happened next? No, I was very unprepared for the blowback of the gun. It singed my hair. It felt like... Flames on the side of your face? Yes. You may not Seething. Me, Seething fire! <laughs> you. You're looking in the wrong place. Where were you in the house? Conservatory. The kitchen. How should I know? I hit my knee. I thought you hit your head. It was both. Uh, pardon me, sir, but Yvette saw a man moving in the darkness. Oui, monsieur. No, it would have been an average-sized monsieur. Oh, who <laughs> care about a hit on the head? The dead body had holes. Mrs. White confessed to shooting the gun, and I heard it go off eight times. But there were only four holes, and there were no other holes found anywhere else in the room. What is that? Really? something that matters the number of gunshots heard could prove to be useful so let me ask you again how many shots did you hear seven six it has to be six that gun can only hold six seven i know it was seven i don't know six or seven it was all muffled where i was well it's about to get a lot clearer green because i have my answers we all know that Mrs. White claimed she was firing at an assailant who was carrying a blunt object, preparing for it to make contact with our Mr. Body. But is that true? Checking the chamber of the gun, four bullets were fired, and that's consistent with the number of holes found in his chest. Well, that does it! Right? It would seem that way, but something wasn't adding up. Mrs. White's past dealings with crime scenes meant it was far more beneficial to her if Mr. Body walked out of here alive. Well, maybe with just a knee to the groin. Why would she jeopardize that? Why were there so many inconsistencies being heard amongst all of you? It could have been the confusion of the moment, but I just didn't buy it. It would have to be someone who could get close to Mr. Body in the chaos. Someone it was the butler. The means to escape right. and someone... Who's a it's always the butler could be disguised could it have been a disgraced war profiteer or an adulterous doctor or maybe it was me You're not on the list i'm sorry no it was you mr green not the patent stand in i didn't do it so you say maybe because mrs white gave you such a beautiful alibi but but I, I didn't have the gun! Ah, the gun. With the inconsistent amount of shots being heard. Turns out the number of shots each person heard helped me narrow the suspect list down. You see, the variation in the number of sounds heard by each guest maybe was due to the fact that they knew the source of one of those sounds. Miss Scarlet tipped and broke a potted plant, which Mrs. Peacock could have mistook for a gunshot, but Miss Scarlet knew it wasn't. I did do that. Professor Plum created two more fake bangs, hitting both his head and his knee, so he only heard six shots. And Colonel Mustard created the fourth fake bang when he mistook a pot in the kitchen for an attacker, hit it with his lead pipe, and created its dent. I never said that's what happened! Okay, that's exactly what happened. And to make a long story short, it's too late. we're back down to the four real shots. The ones Mrs. White supposedly actually fired. Into the body! Or were they? 
You said that you ran as far as you could when the lights went out? Yes, to the conservatory, where a secret passage brought you right back to the lounge to take down Mr. Body's sight unseen. And then you got out of there the way you came in. To escape the line of fire. As I believe you put it. How did you know about a secret passageway? I was supplied a copy of the blueprints. Right here. Oh. And how did he know about it? Must have had a friend on the inside. But that still doesn't explain how he shot Mr. Body. Simple. He didn't. Oh my God. No one did. Mrs. White fired at Mr. Green, like she said, and the four bullets all hit the wall beyond the secret entrance. When he left the way he came, he closed it, hiding the four bullet holes. But what about the bullet holes found in Mr. Body? I never said they were bullet holes. Wasn't sure what they were, and I didn't want to rule anything out. They were gashes in Mr. Body filled with shrapnel. And upon careful, agonizing hours of scrutiny and a disgusting taste test, I was finally able to determine that it was zinc shrapnel, an easily breakable metal that composes your very worn-down candlestick. That's also the only weapon that I didn't place by Mr. Body, because it was already there. Why didn't you say that before? <laughs> there you go. Sorry. All on my own. I... I... Did it. <gasps> There's just one thing I don't understand. One thing? Washington, D.C. is an incredibly progressive town. You could have stayed in the closet at the State Department before it would have been safe being out. Mr. Body threatened to expose my dealings with foreign affairs, leaking government secrets for the furtherance of communism. Good God! So it was never about your hidden sexuality? No, Detective Jewel. Being gay was just a red herring. Well, congratulations, Mr. Green. Looks like you're going to prison for a long time. Court, he's arresting himself. Thank you all for your time. Imagine arresting yourself. I'm just gonna say it. Those two look really similar. <laughs> That's how it could have happened. But here's what really happened. It was Mrs. White. Casual green time. Hey, everybody, I hope that you enjoyed that video. Uh, it was originally supposed to be just a photo shoot, and then we were all like, hey, why don't we make an actual skit video based around all of this? Uh, turns out writing a mystery? Frickin' hard. <laughs> but I enjoyed every second of it because Clue is one of my favorite movies in the entire world. I think I discovered it when I was 10 on Comedy Central and it changed my life. There was a lot of people online that told me that they didn't even know Clue was a movie. Oh my gosh. Check it out. If nothing else, a lot more of the inside jokes in this video are gonna make sense to you. <laughs> Flames on the side of my face. The comedic Seething. actor in that movie Seething are fire. Worth to watch alone. Are you trying to make me look stupid in front of the other guests? Don't need any help from me, sir. That's right. And I've also had a lot of people online tell me I look like Mr. Green from Clue, so I might as well make that a reality. Well, I didn't do it. So, there you go. A little loving homage to Clue, the movie. Hey, Clue, thank you for everything. Thank you for forming so much of my comedy. And also thank you to my incredible friends who came together to make this video. You're all awesome for doing that, dedicating so much of your time. I love you all so much. You're amazing. Uh, We're going to also have a friend scenes featurette to show a little bit of the shenanigans that went on so if you want to check that out that's going to be at patreon.com slash thomas sanders videos like these could not happen without you all so thank you for every bit of your support you are all awesome thank you all so much for watching if you're interested in any of our previous videos you can click over here and if you're new to the channel and would like to subscribe click down here that is it and until next time take it easy guys gals and non-binary pals peace out told y'all i didn't do it now i'm going home to sleep with my wife what it when he calls me that <gasps> my thoughts uh mr green and the butler i hate it when he calls me that no the young card was my favorite low-key and this has been a lot better than how the recent sander asides have been going or sanders asides as a whole i don't really like sander asides and i prefer more clue skits fun <laughs> thank you so much for watching thank you for keeping up with me even though i've been busy with frozen uh it's been very fun
to do off the cuff videos like this might continue after Frozen. Not as much, but a little bit, a little, little bit. And all my social media links are in the description below. There's also a link to my live channel where you can see me go live and my Etsy where you could get bead stuff. So if you want to buy bead stuff, go right ahead and buy some. Yay. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for watching. And like always, do your best.